Everyone, uh, welcome uh, to our new location, and uh, we're going to begin the hearing. On, uh, we have three reappointments to CRMC, and before we begin that, I want to um, let everyone know that these, if they didn't know, uh, these reappointments were scheduled last week, and we held them because uh, I believe everyone on the committee by now has received the communications we received from uh, the group, no LNG, and uh, they sent the email to the Senate President, myself, and the members of the committee. And because of the comments they made in their email, uh, out of abundance of caution, I consulted with legal counsel and we decided to hold the appointments and contact the governor's office and uh, give the, uh, the document to the governor's office and to, to get a legal opinion before we went forward. And the committee does have in their packet a letter from uh, Governor Raimondo's uh, Executive Council, Claire Richards. And I am going to uh, read it into the record. Um, it is addressed to, uh, to me, Ari, uh, the appointments of Michael Hudner, Donald Gomez, Patricia Reynolds to the Coastal Resources Management Council. Um, I have been asked to provide a legal response to the attached email from no LNG concerning the state qualifications of the three of the governor's appointments to the Coastal Resources Management Council, Michael Hudner representing Little Compton, Donald Gomez representing Little Compton, and Patricia Reynolds representing Warwick. No LNG raises the following concerns, quote, at this time, it is unclear how many CRMC members are elected or appointed officials at the time of their appointment, end quote. Rhode Island General Laws 46-23-2A2 requires the governor to appoint four members who hold a locally appointed or elected office, one from, uh, one from a municipality under 25,000, one from a coastal municipality over 25,000, and two from a coastal municipality over 25,000. With these three appointments, CRMC will have four members who are elected or appointed officials at the time of their appointment. Specifically, Mr. Hudner is an appointed member of the Little Compton Population 3,492 Housing Trust. Mr. Gomez is an appointed member of the Little Compton Charter Review Commission. And Ms. Reynolds is an appointed member of the Warwick Population 82,672, Community Outreach Education Community. Ray Coya, who was previously appointed by the governor, is and was at all relevant times an appointed judge in the Cranston Municipal Court, the population of 80,387. If the Senate confirms the governor's appointments, there will be four elected or appointed officials on the CRMC, exactly the number required by the CRMC enabling legislation. The next question, quote, currently less than half of the CRMC members reside in coastal communities, end quote. This is not correct. If the Senate confirms the governor's appointments, all of the CRMC's members will reside in coastal communities. Next question, quote, there appears to be some confusion as to whom, besides the governor, has the authority to fill CRMC positions, end quote. There is no confusion regarding the power to make appointments to the CRMC. Article 9, Section 5 of the Rhode Island Constitution authorizes the governor, subject to the advice and consent of the Senate, to appoint all members of any board, commission, or state quasi-public entity which exercises executive power, including the CRMC. Indeed, CRMC's enabling statute specifically provides that both public and appointed elected members must be appointed by the governor. Rhode Island General Laws 46-23-2A2. The next question, quote, it is clear that the governor has appointed more than the amount of members allotted to her office and not all of them meeting the existing criteria, end quote. There is currently a lawsuit in the Rhode Island Superior Court challenging certain aspects of the CRMC appointment process. Regardless of the outcome of that lawsuit, however, the appointments of the three municipal officials before the Senate Committee on Environment and Agriculture would not be affected. They all indisputably meet the requirements of Rhode Island General Laws 46-23-2. No LNG makes a number of other comments about the characteristics of members regardless of their statutory eligibility. 
This letter does not address those concerns since they are not, they are the province of the Senate in its advice and consent capacity. And it is signed uh, by Claire Richards, uh, Executive Counsel to the Governor. So, uh, with that, and if anyone needs a copy and the public wants a copy of the letter, uh, it is a matter of record, so that, that will be available to the press and anyone who wants one. So, we, will, um, we do have a good deal of people signed up uh, on these appointments. And what I would ask is, uh, when I call people up, if you are signed up on all three, if you would be kind enough to uh, speak to all three of the appointments at the same time. And the first person I would like to call up is Tony DeSisto um, from CRMC. And if you could move, sir, because they'll be at the podium. Thank you. Welcome. Good afternoon, Tony DeSisto. I'm the legal counsel for the Coastal Resources Management Council. Um, I don't have anything to add other than uh, what's already been placed in the record. If you have any questions as to any of the three um, uh, appointees, I'd be happy to answer them. They're all, uh, this is a reappointment, uh, they've been serving, and um, if you have any questions, I can answer them. Okay. Uh, no, that's not how it goes. You will have your time if you're signed up to testify, but you cannot ask questions of a witness. You can give testimony to the committee. It's up to the committee to um, ask questions of the witness. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions for uh, Tony, the sister with this time? You will be here throughout, I, I hope. Yes. Or for a while anyway. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think it's probably proper for me to read the actual um, appointments into the record before we <coughs> take testimony. I Forgive me on that. Okay. The three appointments are the reappointment of Donald T. Gomez uh, as an appointed or elected official from a coastal municipality of less than 25,000 population to the Coastal Resources Management Council for a term expiring January 31st, 2020. And the next is the reappointment of Michael S. Hudner, appointed or elected official from a municipality of less than 25,000 population to the Coastal Resources Management Council for a term expiring January 31st, 2020. And the third is the reappointment of Patricia G. Reynolds, appointed or elected official from a coastal municipality of more than 25,000 population to the Coastal Resources Management Council for a term expiring January 31st, 2020. And I have been notified that none of the reappointments are here, and that is uh, not necessary for them to appear uh, as reappointments because they have been before this committee before. So we will now uh, proceed back to the witness list. And let's see, we have uh, the first one is, is it, um, I'll try to read the writing, please forgive me if I make a mess of your name. Is that, is it Lorraine? Yes. Lorraine. Lorraine. And what is your last name, Lorraine? Savard. Savard, thank you.